What's up, everybody? I'm Finn McKenty. This is the Punk Rock MBA. This is my second channel where I talk about business and marketing and personal development and creativity, all that kind of stuff that's not a fit for my main channel. What I wanted to talk about today was the process of how I make my videos because a lot of people ask about that, so I figured I would just explain it. The gear, like hardware, software, how I edit them, how I write them, how long it takes, all that stuff. Before I do that, the first thing I wanna say is that I don't think I'm particularly great at this from like a production standpoint. I don't really know that much about cameras. I don't care about cameras. I use the simplest editing techniques that I possibly can. Like, I don't really enjoy that part of it. So I put as little effort into it as I can while still making like a halfway decent video. And so I think there's two takeaways from that. The first is that if you are intimidated, like if you have ever said, I wanna make videos, but you're intimidated because you feel like you have to know a lot about production, you don't. My channel is proof of that. I have 12 million views now and I still use the auto setting on my camera. I literally have no idea. I barely know what f-stop is. I know it's a thing on cameras. I really, I couldn't explain it to you. I don't know what f-stop is. The second thing is that production values do not actually really matter in my opinion for whether your videos get traction or not. You can think of, you know, go on YouTube, there's tons of beautiful travel vlogs or whatever Whatever, that have like 75 views because nobody really cares how nice a video looks if you don't have anything to say. Unless your channel is specifically about beautiful production, which some people are like Peter McKinnon or you know these other filmmaking channels, their videos do need to look nice. But other than that, I don't think it's at all important for them to look nice. I think it's a waste of time and a distraction and you definitely do not need to be any kind of an expert on production to get started. So with that out of the way, let me walk you through the process. The first thing to understand is that the schedule schedule depends on whether it is a sponsored video or not. If it is sponsored, they typically want a draft two days before we go live. So if the video is going to go live on Wednesday, I need to get them a draft on Monday. Basically, if it's a sponsored video, I need to work two days earlier than I would if it's an unsponsored video, which kind of sucks because that means I have to fit the same amount of work into you know, less time, but it is what it is. They pay me, so you gotta earn the money. That means that I need to have the video done pretty much on Sunday night so that I can send them the draft on Monday morning. So working backwards from that, what that means is I like to have it shot on Friday. I will edit it over the weekend. And if I need to have it shot on Friday, that means I need to have it written by Thursday night, which means I need to start on like Tuesday night. So as you can already tell, it is a grind. That means that the second I finish the video on Monday, I instantly have to start thinking about writing the next one, which, you know, it can be a little bit exhausting, but you've probably heard every YouTuber talk about what a grind it is, and it is. Or if I wanna have the script finished by Thursday, that means I usually wanna start writing it on Tuesday. Typically, it takes me between, I would say, one and five hours to write a video, depending on what it is, like the what killed the genre ones or how they got big videos that require a little bit more research definitely take longer to write. So I start on Tuesday. I'll usually, I write them in the evening, usually after I'm done with my day job with my URM Academy stuff. You know, I'll spend one or two hours a night. I'll get that done by Thursday evening. Then I shoot it on Friday. So typically I'll shoot it at like, maybe 4 p.m. or so on Friday after I'm done with all my URM stuff. It usually takes me about an hour to do that. I'm able to do it pretty quickly because I have everything all set up. The lights stay in place, the tripod stays in place. Like I have the whole thing all set up, so all I have to do is turn on the lights, uh, put the memory card in the camera, and go. Super easy. If the video is 15 or 20 minutes long, I will usually end up with about 45 or 50 minutes of footage. Uh, and then I, because I redo a couple lines or there's just pauses in between, whatever. And as far as the script goes, what I write is probably about 85 or 90% what you hear in the video. I will change a couple lines or ad lib a little bit as I get into it, but pretty much I write out every word. I feel like I need to get all the details and the nuances of the language exactly right. Words really matter in these. So I need to take the time to really think about exactly how I want to communicate it and that's why I script it all out. 
I use Evernote to write. There's lots of different ways you could do it. Uh, but what I do is I have an Evernote document with all my different video ideas in it. And I have one document that has just like jotted down list of ideas. I have maybe 20 or 30 of them in there. And then I have a script for each individual video within Evernote. Uh, I like Evernote, but there's like Microsoft OneNote, the Apple Notes app. Uh, I don't know, there's probably a bunch of other ones that do the same thing. After it's shot, which again takes about an hour, that's actually the shortest part of the whole thing. It's also the least enjoyable part for me because actually shooting a video is really tiring for me because you have to be on like if you were sitting in the same room with me right now you'd be like dude calm down why are you being so over the top if you want to come across as like having a normal level of energy in a video you have to be way over the top when you're shooting it like if you're not cringing and feeling like you're being ridiculously over the top when you're shooting a video you probably aren't using enough energy you probably need to be more expressive i think this is why theater kids are so extra because they know that and they just act like that all the time but anyway, uh, as far as the shooting part goes, uh, like I said, I don't know that much or care that much about cameras. I have a Canon T7i, which I got two years ago. That's a pretty cheap camera. I think I paid about 700 bucks for mine with the lens and the body. I don't know what kind of lens it is. Uh, I'm looking at it now, it says 18 to 135 millimeter. I don't know what that means. I just got the one that the camera guy told me to get. The one thing I would say from a production standpoint that does really matter that I had to put some energy into is lighting. You can have the best camera in the world, but without halfway decent lighting, it's going to look like shit. I don't know enough about lighting to say what all the options are. I just got this lighting kit that again, the guy at the camera store told me to get this one. So I did. There's ring lights and LED lights and all these other options. They're probably all good. I don't know. Look into it. Unfortunately, I can't be very helpful on that. Like I said, I don't think video production values matter all that much, but audio definitely matters. And if you've watched my videos for a while, you probably noticed that the audio on my old ones was a lot worse than it is now. I think I finally have it figured out. The first one I used was this guy, this Rode shotgun mic, which mounts on the top of the camera like this, and you know, you talk at it. Uh, I think this is a great mic. It's just not the right one for me because I record these inside. And as you can see, we have really high ceilings in our house here. So it's a super like echoey room. And this room picks, this mic picks up all that room noise. And that's why the audio on my old videos does not sound very good. I tried another solution again from Rode. This is the Rode Link uh, wireless lav mic that clips on here, it plugs into this, and then there's another receiver unit that plugs into the camera. This is a great product, but I stopped using it for two reasons. The first one is that it's still kind of hot. There's a way to turn down the volume on the microphone, but even then it's still kind of hot. If you watch my videos from say six months ago, you'll hear that my voice sounds a little bit like loud and sometimes distorted. That's because that mic is really hot. Maybe there's a way to fix that. I don't know. And the second one is that because it plugs directly into the camera and there's no way to monitor the audio on this camera, battery would die or something and I wouldn't know it and I'd realize that I had no audio for 20 minutes and I would have to redo it. Because of that, I switched to what I have currently been using, which I think I will keep using, is this. This is also by Rode. Uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's this thing which plugs into your phone. This is my old iPhone 8 that I kept. I use this for podcasts too. You can see it has uh, two inputs here for lav mics and then it has this app here road reporter which you use to record and you can monitor that the audio is actually working you're not going to run into this situation where you're like oh shit the audio wasn't working for the last 20 minutes uh, and then it records this as a wave if you have two mics plugged into this, you can record it as a stereo wave with each mic in one channel. There's lots of headroom. It sounds great. If you notice over the past month or so, my videos sound, I think, significantly better. Only downside is that you then have to sync the audio and the video, but that's easy to do. What you do is clap. And then when you look in Premiere at the waveform, you'll see where that clap is. You can line them up. So it only takes me an extra three minutes or so to line up the audio, but that way it sounds way better. I don't have to worry about the camera, like the battery running out or some shit like that. Got it all on my phone. It's awesome. So that's how I'm doing audio now. That's been by far the most challenging part of the production process for me. And I think I finally got it figured out.
So after I have it shot, the next thing to do is edit it. I do all my stuff in Premiere Pro uh, on a MacBook from 2018. Um, there's nothing fancy that I do in Premiere. You can use uh, iMovie, you can use Final Cut Pro, you can use Sony Vegas, probably Windows Movie Maker or whatever would work fine for my videos. Nothing I do in my videos is at all fancy. All I do is just jump cuts from one thing to the other and all the footage that you see in my videos, I rip off of YouTube. And yeah, it takes me probably, uh, I don't know, between two and five hours to edit the video. Again, depending on what it is, if I need to go through and pull a lot of B-roll and example songs and stuff like that, those take me longer to edit. Like the Descendants one took me a long time because there's so many songs in that one and I need to go through and find the song and then find the exact part of the song and all that stuff. So those take me longer. If you noticed also in the past six months or so, I started doing more just kind of like random, like putting in random memes and stuff like that in there. Like I call them pattern interrupts. The idea is that I want to have every 30 seconds or so, I want to have something like interrupt the pattern and break up the monotony of me just talking so that you'll keep watching. Once I have that done, I render it out and I save it as an unlisted link and I send that to Tony, my manager, who then sends that to the advertiser to review. Very occasionally, they will ask for changes, like maybe they want me to like use a different piece of footage in the part where I'm talking about the product. Like that happens, I don't know, maybe 10% of the time, but usually they approve it on the first try. I think that's because I really carefully read the brief to make sure that what I'm sending them is good because I want them to approve my stuff on the first try, A, to save me the hassle of redoing it, and B, because I want them to think that I'm on my shit and I want them to keep working with me because I'm easy to work with. Once it's approved, then it's just time to release it. The one thing there is I spend a lot of time on my thumbnails because thumbnail matters a lot. Thumbnail and title are the two things that affect whether people click on your video. YouTube wants to show people videos that they like, right? How do they know you like the video? Well, if you watch it for a long time, that means you like it. So if you have a good video, people watch it for a long time. But if people never even click on the video in the first place, it doesn't matter how good it is, right? So to solve that, you need to have a really good like clickbait thumbnail and title, basically. And I'm gonna say clickbait like somewhat sarcastically. So the thumbnail typically takes me between 30 minutes and and an hour, I would say, which is a long time. I don't think most people spend that time on thumbnails, but they're important. I think my thumbnails are good. I get a lot of compliments on them. Fortunately, that's a thing I'm able to do because I was a graphic designer for years. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much my process. Again, there's nothing really fancy there. Thing that I put the most attention and time into by far is the writing part. I always challenge myself to try to say something different and unique and challenging that people haven't heard before. And then I also try to do the same thing with the thumbnail and title. I think those are the two most important pieces. I probably don't even need to put as much work into my editing my videos as I do, but I don't know, it seems to be working so I don't wanna change it. So yeah, that's my process for making the videos. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. I don't know a lot about cameras and production and all that stuff, so I probably can't be helpful there, but I'll do my best. So hopefully that's helpful and let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.